I'm sure you will agree with me that any and every opportunity that we get to be able to lift his voice, to be able to express our thankfulness to who he, he is for us, it's always, always good. And the more we thank him for all the things that he does in our life, the more we realize that it's just not enough because his goodness is so much. His goodness is so much. We, we may come to a point where we may feel that this life is not sufficient enough to keep thanking him for what he has done for us and what he does for us. Amen. So that's the God we, we honor and we worship and we love. So tonight we are, we are going to see something which is, which is very beautiful. And this is, uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, need your help to read some verses uh, while Disha will be showing them on the screen. But I will also encourage you to open your Bible and uh, keep an eye on what is written in the version that you have. So let us begin with uh, Exodus chapter 31. If you can come to the book of Exodus chapter 31 and verse 18. Chapter 31, verse 18, the last verse in chapter 31 of Exodus, please. <coughs> there you go. Tisha is very quick. So I'll just read what NKJV says, but uh, you can surely check uh, the version that you have. And this reads, And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. And you know what I'm talking about. So here is the moment when Moses is with God on Mount Sinai. And God has been speaking to him. And then to, he, there, there is this moment when God writes with his finger on the, two, on the two stone tablets, the Ten Commandments that he wrote. He writes them on these two stone tablets and gives them to Moses. As a kid, when I used to read this, you know, one of the thoughts that I used to have was, and you will have to think from my point of view, from India's point of view, because I come from a country wherein there is hardly about 74% literacy rate now, uh, but 20 years back, 30 years back, it was less than that. And so then I used to, whenever I would read this, I would feel, man, God is a literate God. He knows to write. Wow. That, because from being from a village, most of my friends around me, they, they did not know to write or read. They just did not go to school. They, they were just like, you know, they never bothered to go to school. So I knew they do not know. And it was a very common thing for me. And when I read this, when I read this verse first time, and God wrote on the stone, I thought, oh, God knows to read and write. He is an educated God, the God that I was educated. I know it will be difficult to apprehend over here because here everyone is educated, everyone knows to read and write. But how good is this? So here comes this moment when God picks two stones and uh, he is writing with his finger on the stones. Boom. And now, these two tablets of stones, when God has put his imprint on these mere stones, these are just simple stone plates, stones. But the moment he writes on these two stone plates, these stone plates become valuable. They become precious. Something that was mere soil. If you crush this stone, it will be mere soil. Nothing more than that. But now because God has touched it, God has put his imprint. God has written his heart on the stone. This stone has become valuable. This stone has become important. This, the significance of this stone plate has gone from nowhere to everything. Everything in heaven, everything on earth. Just valuable. And what amazes me the most is, the use of the word testimony. 
this same stone plates which had no value before the moment god touched it the moment god wrote on it they were not only called just the stones but they were called the testimony this this stones got a new identity they were called testimony and um for 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 people in the church the simple definition of the word testimony is the time when or or the expression of what god has done in my life and uh, um you know we 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 often give some time for that and uh, we often try to share it you know we are often encouraged you share your testimony with people uh, you know that that is one of the best way of sharing the gospel this is one of the best way of reaching out to the unreached share your testimony and uh, a simple understanding of uh, the word testimony has been to share something that god has done in my life or to share something that god god has uh, helped me with and i don't know uh, i don't know how much significance is there to the word testimony but if you see if you see how the word testimony is being used in the book of exodus it just amazes me that the moment a stone we are talking about stone the moment god imprinted on this stone this stone became testimony this stone became testimony i, I i'll help you what I, what i'm trying to what i'm trying to say come let's let's see exodus chapter 25 verse 16 see what it reads exodus chapter 25 and verse 16 please Thank you so much. So now these two tablets, these two plates of stone which God is calling them as testimony. The moment these two stones were put in the ark, the ark is called ark of testimony. The simple ark has got new definition, has got new image now, has got new introduction now. a simple ark the moment these two testimonies were placed there this became the ark of testimony exodus chapter 38 verse 21 can someone else read exodus chapter 38 let's read verse 21 thank you so much abigail so this two tablets of stone now which has been turned named as testimony when they were placed in the ark the ark becomes the ark of testimony now this ark is under a tabernacle it's a simple tabernacle but the moment this ark comes under this tabernacle this tabernacle is called tabernacle of testimony all because of the tablets all because of the testimony the tablets that were placed wherever these tablets are going wherever these tablets are being placed <laughs> I'm, i'm just finding hard to get some space here but that's why i'll i'll be careful about this mic otherwise the rest of the things are going i just wonder i don't fall down once Yeah, this is safe. Yeah, fine. What I was wa- wanting to let you know is now that when this when these tablets were placed in the ark, the ark became the ark of testimony. When this ark is placed in the tabernacle, the tabernacle becomes the tabernacle of testimony. All because of these two tablets. And what were these two tablets? These two tablets were mere plates of stone. <laughs> mere plates of stone. but these two mere plates of stone became so valuable because of touch of god my dear brothers and sisters i don't know if there is someone today who is thinking my life is useless my life doesn't have any worth any value i i i don't think i am worth anything 
I, I do not understand if there is any significance to my life. I want to let you know this, this evening, my dear brother, my dear sister, the moment God touches you, the moment God touches you, you become his testimony. You become his living testimony. And now, wherever you go, wherever God puts you into, even if it is a family, even if it is among the group of friends, even if it is among the group of mates, even if it is an organization, your workplace, everything will be defined through you. It will not be under that organization. It will not be under that shelter. You will be defined. But that shelter will be defined through you. Because you are the one who has been touched by God. You are the one on whom God has imprinted his plans, his purposes. You are valuable in his sight. And wherever you go now, that place will be defined through you. Through you. The same stones we just had no identity on that mount. Now everything was known because or through those stones. And so is true with you and with me. For us, you know, for those stones, these stones had hardly had any thinking process. They, they just did not know what difference has come in their, in their stature, in their personality. They just did not know. But heaven knew. Heaven knew what change has come on these stones. These stones have become valuable. You and I may not realize how important we are, how valuable we are in heaven's point of view. But the heaven knows who you are because of the imprinting of God's fingers on you and on me. Your identity has changed. Your value has changed. Your position brings identity and value to the things that you touch now where you are placed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mere stones. Pebbles. Absolutely zero value. But now is the most important thing. To such an extent, to such an extent that they found, these tablets found their location, their place, with manna, with Aaron's rod. Let me show that to you, which is so good. If you come to Exodus chapter 16, verse 34. Exodus chapter 16. And let's read verse 34, please. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, would you mind reading from 32, please? <laughs> then Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Fill it, Omar, with it to be kept for your generations that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness. When I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, 33. And Moses said to Aaron, take a pot and put an omer of manna in it and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. And the children of Israel ate yeah. manna 40 years till they came to an inhabited land. They ate manna until they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Amen. Here is the, here is the instance wherein we see that these two tablets were placed with a pot which was filled with manna. And then later on it was said, they put Aaron's rod into this same thing along with manna 
and the two tablets. My dear brothers and sisters, the manna and the rod of Aaron, which is placed with the two tablets in this ark, which is covered in the tabernacle, which also has got a veil, which everything is called veil of testimony, tabernacle of testimony, and ark of testimony, all because of the two tablets. But now remember, the two tablets, which probably represents you and me, on which is the touch of God, for which is the plan and purpose of God, the touch of God that has changed our identity. Now this identity has something in addition to our own identity. And the first thing is manna. Manna was supposed to be placed with the tables, with the tablets of testimony. And we know that manna was something that God was something that God had given to the Israelites for 40 years. Each day, he provided this food. He provided this food to the people. Without fail, every day, he was providing them. And in New Testament, there was a moment when the Pharisees and the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, if you can give us a sign, then we will believe you. Like our fathers got a sign, the sign of manna. And then Jesus answers them and says, manna was given by my father. You got manna from my father. And I am the one who has been sent by my father. And I am one of the sign. I am the sign of who I am. So the manna represents our Jesus. Manna, if you, if you see further, he is, manna is the bread. And when Jesus calls himself as the bread, he tells, I am that bread which has been torn apart for you. So the manna speaks of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The tablets of testimony has importance, significance, because of the touch of God. But now these tablets of testimony need to be identified with crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And that's why they were placed with manna. You and I, we have that touch of God. We have that calling of God. We have, we have, been, we have been called by God. But now we need to know that our identity is along with is along with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. We are known, we are, we are identified with that. That is the first thing. And then the second thing that we... Thanks, Jim. And the second thing that we read is about Aaron's rod, which we get to read in Numbers chapter 17. If you can please come to Numbers chapter 17 and verse 4 and 10. Numbers chapter 17, would you mind reading verse 4 and then 10, please? And then verse 10. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So this is the third thing that is being placed in the ark, besides the tablets, manna was put in the pot. And now we get to read that the rod of Aaron was to be placed there. What is, what is so good about the rod of Aaron? If you, there, is one interesting, uh, there is one interesting thing about, uh, about this. If you see uh, verse 7 and 8, uh, Kerry, would you please read 7 and 8 of the same chapter? So this rod of Aaron, which was a dry rod, it was 
a dry rod which he was using for his own support. He would use it to walk along. But when this is placed there, what happens? This rod was placed with the rods of other heads of the houses. But as far as the rod of Aaron is concerned, when next day morning, Moses goes and checks, this rod has sprouted. Now, this is something against science. There is no soil. There is, there is nothing that should make this rod get that life. But this rod not only sprouted, but there were almonds. That's what it is written. But yielded ripe almonds. How long did that take? One night. One night. Just in one night. Next day, because that's how it is written. Now it came to pass on the next day. So just in a span of a night, next day, this this rod has changed. This rod which was dead, this rod which had no beauty, this rod which had no life, something happened and this rod is now sprouted and there are ripened almonds on this rod. And this rod was kept with manna and the tablets. What does this rod speak of, my dear brothers and sisters? This rod speaks of resurrected life of Jesus Christ. Resurrected life of Jesus Christ. Irrespective of how talented you and I are, irrespective of how anointed or blessed we are with different calibers in our life, irrespective of that, unless we have experience of crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we won't be used for his kingdom. A person is not used in the kingdom of God for any ministry, for any service, because of his talent, because of his caliber. No, never. It is done only because of the experience of crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The moment that experience comes, your life, however dry it may be, however it may lack any beauty to any level, however ugly it may be, but know that the moment you experience crucifixion of Jesus and you experience the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you will start bearing fruits, ripened almonds, says the word of God. Something that is so valuable, something that is so nutritious for anyone who receives that. But that comes only with an experience of that night. That did not come immediately. The rod was not already having those almonds or wasn't sprouted. But that rod had to experience that night. The, the, the span of that night brings change in you and me. When you and I wish or desire to be used by God, God allows us to go through that night. The journey of that night is important to be fruitful for the glory of God. Unless we go through that time of night, unless we go through that time of trial, unless we go through that experience of of crucifixion and resurrection. Please understand this. We will never be fruitful for the kingdom of God. Having natural talent is one thing, but being used through that talent or having that talent used for the body of Christ is different thing, absolutely different thing. It may amaze someone, but the truth is people who are least talented or have less caliber would be the ones who would be used the best by God most of the times. Most of the times. And the reason is the experience of crucifixion of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, which is termed here as night. The span of that night. But unless we go through that time of night, we cannot be fruitful for God. We cannot be. However talented you and I may be, unless the touch of God is there, 
unless that touch comes, we cannot bring fruits for his kingdom. I know many a times ministry looks so fancy. It looks so cool to be able to stand in front and speak to thousands. As, as, as a young Christian, when we used to pray in India, when we used to talk about ministry, we, we, would, we would seek such prophecies wherein someone will say, you will reach out to millions. And I saw, and, and, and if someone is sharing that I saw a vision, there were thousands standing before you. And we would be so excited. We would be so happy that, wow, this is the ministry that God is talking for us. But we never realize that that will happen only when you go through night. But no one speaks about that night. Everyone speaks about the exciting things. This will happen and that will happen. Hold on. The entire story is, unless you go through that dark night, you will not see fruits on the rod. You will not see fruits in your life. And that is the truth. That is the truth. The identity has not come because you shone. The identity has come because God picked you and wrote on you. He touched you. The identity has come because of that. But then we need to be identified with crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Nothing else can bring fruits. Nothing else can bring true fruits. And remember, our fruits needs to be such that tomorrow when God makes those fruits to go through fire, those fruits should stay. That type of fruits Bible speaks about. Fruits that will stay strong for God. That will come only when we, you and I, go through that dark night. This rod had gone through that dark night says the verse 8. Now it came to pass on the next day. It was the next day that, the, that it got sprouted and it got some fruits on it. If there is anyone here who is desiring to be fruitful for the kingdom of God, if there is anyone here who is desiring to serve God, I, I want to let you know that that can happen only and only through God. That can happen only when you identify yourself with the cross of Jesus Christ and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the third and the most important part is that will happen only when you and I go through that dark night. <laughs> I, I sometimes feel the more, the more I listen to people the more I come to this conclusion. Bigger the testimony, of course there is a big story behind that. We may see the glory of that person, but always ask, how did you reach there? And then you will get to know a long, dreadful story of that dark night. And the darker that night is, brighter is this star shining for the glory of God. But that is, that is how it works. That is how it works. And you and I who have that sincere desire to shine for the glory of God, we should be ready to pass through that night. We should be ready to pass through that night. Amen? Amen. Would you mind closing eyes? And... May I request Alan if he can please lead us in concluding prayer, please. Thank you, Father God, that you are mindful of you are just that you transform us into stones and touch us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you that the life you have placed in us by your touch. Help us to be the living stones that you want us to be. Build your church, we pray. Lord, we just open ourselves to you so we may be built together and touched afresh by you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we never have to go through the night alone, that you are always with us, always present. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Alan. Thank you.
you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for your time and have a wonderful evening and uh, keep praying for each other. Amen.